Well, we come back, my friends, to the Artist Next Level podcast. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Ahmad Saki Anwar, one of the most well-known artists in Asia. Saki has established himself as a leading figure in the art world and is known for his stunning photorealistic paintings, expressive portraits, and contemporary urban scenes. His use of icons, symbols, and allegories led to distinctive psychological and metaphysical dimensions to his work, really creating a cinematic quality that truly captivates the viewer. And we're going to talk about that in this episode. Saki's work has been exhibited and collected all over the world. And my friend Drew and I are super excited and super thrilled to have him on the show today to share his insights as well as his experiences. So sit down, my friend. Grab a cup of coffee and enjoy our conversation with Agma Seki Anwar on the Artist Next Level podcast. So, Saki, welcome to the show. My good friend Drew, welcome to the show. How are you guys? Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I'm great. It's a it's a real honor. I got these uh, two uh, icons in the art world and sitting right here with me. So I'm very, very pleased. Something that we pointed out before we started recording that three was for our friends who are not watching this but i listening to the podcast the three of us have a, a nice little white beard that we have going on so <laughs> but besides that there are other things that we have in common which we will talk about here in the in the chat uh also for you guys to kind of understand or uh, the this this conversation drew and saki knowing each other uh i'm kind of new to to their relationship here but i'm looking forward to get to know him better to introduce him to you who are listening or watching this uh his work is just inspiring unbelievable uh and uh, we're gonna have a great time so there are uh, no boundaries <laughs> to the questions that we'll be chatting right. about so we, we're looking for a great great chat and uh maybe uh, i would love uh drew and seki tell us how you guys met both of you before we can actually talk about seki's work oh wow well, yeah man. How many years ago, Drew? 50 years? Well, you... <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> it feels like that, believe me. Uh, we met, a, I think, a, I was trying to gather that uh, information, and I think it was probably 1993 or 94, I think, here in Malaysia. Yeah, about, about that. I think, yes. I feel when I first joined um, Paksu Gallery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that I, was about 94 or 95. Maybe yeah. in that area. Yeah. And it was still working with and costing at that time, if I remember. I was, yes. Yeah. yeah. And and how things have changed, huh? Since uh yeah. since then. Yeah. And I and I just uh, on a side note, I mean I'm I'm deeply honored that I, I get this chance to have you on our show because really, uh, Zachy, I you know, I've looked up to you for years. Uh as a colleague, you know, I'm very, you know, blessed to have this friendship. Uh, yeah, uh, and, and we have a professional relationship too. We've shown together, uh, I think, uh, and also, well, people maybe don't know that we share the same birthday. Yeah. We have the same birth date. <laughs> no but kidding. Oh, not right. older than I am. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yes. We, uh, yeah. Both of us were from an advertising background. And yeah. Both of us yes, in quite late. Uh, we sort of ended with the same dealer. <laughs> this is a very similar story to across the the whole board here, the three of us, yeah. because all of us have had this sort of uh, graphic background, and yeah. and I think that's a really interesting place to start because I think that that was the draw for both. Uh, you know, Sergio knew my work from a Chicago show, simply because <clears throat> excuse me, I had put these uh, you know graphic bars in my work. Uh, yeah. And he sort of recognized it as soon as he saw it back in, well, re-saw it in 2019, immediately he saw that graphic element. And I yeah. think that that's what I was so drawn to you, Zaki. You know, when I first met you, not only your mastery of, of what you do, but uh, it was your subject matter. And th there was something that it wasn't typically, you know, fully fine art. <clears throat> there was a really good graphic element to it and, and mm -hmm. a graphic story to it. And I really, I think that's uh, way back in 93 or 94, really when we were all really just beginning. Um, and, and my career had just really started then too. And so 
You know, that was a fabulous meeting, and, and uh, we can regale in some of those stories we have. <laughs> but I think right from the get-go, uh, your, your abilities, not only technically, but creatively and, and idea-wise, has, has, you know, both stunned and, you know, in awe uh, a nation, really. Uh, well, South Asia. Yeah, yeah. And, it's, and I hold you in the highest regard for this. So you were talking about starting with our, you know, graphic background, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things, I mean, I was in advertising for 15, 15 years, 20 years before I started painting. And I think one of the things that um, I gained most from, from that period was that I learned how to penetrate. Um, clearly, and very simply, you know, yep. so that, I mean, in design, that, that's what it's all about. You know, it's communicating and how you get your message that brought to people as clearly and as simply as possible. And I think that that thing sort of uh, has I've sort of transferred that into what that I do. Yeah. 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 Um, so that when people see the word, they, they, they're grabbed immediately by the image, you know, which I think is important. You know, I mean, it's about articulating your ideas. Yeah. So, yep. uh, and I mean, I'm, for some of this clarity is not important, you know, but for me in a certain way it is, you know? Yeah. Well, I think you also, in many ways, I mean, I shared the, a, a short video of you yesterday with, with Sergio for him to just get an idea of some, I think it was from a 2006 show. Or 2008 show at Petronas, uh, at the gallery here in Kuala Lumpur, and you yeah. mentioned, uh, and I think the, the number of people that were that were in this film, short film about your work, mentioned this sort of clarity, and you also yeah. mentioned this fact that it's you know, a lot of it comes from uh, the cinematic world, <clears throat> yeah. and we and we see films, we recognize films, we're all watching films, we're all, this is. What's amazing is that you you have picked up on certain things we've all seen, but probably don't register, you know. Uh, yeah. And then you paint them, and we come in and we we look at your work, particularly that that series that you were doing based on the cinema, uh, you know, capturing sort of a still image from from a cinematic film. Yeah. Uh, it was fantastic because we've seen it, but we're not sure where, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I think that that was the. You you brought something new to the to the canvas that yeah stuff. You know, when I talk about clarity, I think what is important is that um, in the works that I do, I show you very clearly what he made with. But I also at the skinny bang, I um you. The meaning behind this in it is, you know, so mm. I'm showing and hiding at the same time. I mm. think this is what poetic imagery does. You know, when when you read a poem, for example, you, you know, um, there's all these layers of, of of meaning. You know, the words yeah. are very clear, the grammar is very clear, you know, the sentence construction is very clear, but the meaning is elusive. You know. That is something which I'm trying to sort of uh, do visually in art, you know, render something real realistically, but at the same time have an ambiguity when it comes to meaning, and, um, which opens room for exploration, you know. Um, sometimes certain ideas uh, grab me, you know, I don't think too much about it, you know, I go straight into the canvas and put it on there. And then later on, when the painting is done, that's when actually I try to sort of understand what I'm doing, you know? It's mm -hmm. almost um, a bit Freudian in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you dip into things in your subconscious, things that that um, attract you, but you're not sure why, you know? But once you, you, you lay it out on the canvas and you address it, then we realize that every image we put on the canvas is actually autobiographical, you know, and it somehow resonates with what's 
if I absolutely what with what you've experienced you know in life um so this is what excites me you know when, when yeah. making us you know mm. you show and you sort of hide at the same time you know right um it adds an, an extra dimension to the work you know you let people engage with it over a period of time and discover different readings maybe you know rather than look at a piece of work understand it immediately and that's it you know there's nothing else yeah. to discover you know yeah i mean yeah if we buy a piece of work it's gonna hang in someone's house for for a long time you know yes. it better engage that engage that person you know like to uh to find up on that a little bit uh sakia uh, one of the things that really uh struck me about your work is kind of like what you just said now what is visible and was not seen is almost the was not seen as important as what is seen and uh you know you're talking a lot in your video that i saw about the life magazine uh as being one of the kind of things that inspire your popular culture movies and things like that and you know, in in filmmaking, photography, you know, you are framing a section of the world, right? And yes. you know, you you're 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 capturing a section of a much larger story. In painting, mm -hmm. oftentimes, you know, because painting is done inside the studio, there's not an extension around that. It's sometimes very difficult to expand yeah. the world beyond the canvas. Mm -hmm. But you are able to do it and I you know Probably because of your, you know, uh, knowledge of photography, your uh, ex experience of advertising, and your exposure to filmmaking, you know, um, photography, documentary photography, and so on, understanding that there's a beyond world yeah. that what we see in the frame, and you're mm -hmm. able to bring that into painting in a way that allows us to to wonder what's outside the frame, you know, when the yeah. figure is elusive. And, you're showing half of it or when yeah. we are at a nice scene yeah. and we don't know yeah. who's at this at the distance yeah and I, I i agree that this is a great great lead in here mm -hmm. I, I i like this the idea of this ambiguity the the fact that you are not quite sure who was sitting in that red couch mm. uh just prior to it. so it tells you the story beyond or the, yeah. before before that person sat down and after that you know, you're curious as to what it is. And I think that there, there's a certain quality in, you know, if I look at both you and Sergio, I mean, there's a, there's a work where there's a, there's a, there's a transition happening. So the figurative work in Sergio's work, for example, is going somewhere. It's either rising or falling. It's not quite there yet. It hasn't fallen and it hasn't completely risen. So we're, the viewer is left to yeah, there's a tension to, right? to yeah. take that journey, you know, mm -hmm. beyond the edge of the canvas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the um, I think uh, one of the the things that I'm uh, I'm intrigued with your work, Zaki, has always been this. Uh, you you pick up on on sort of social issues in a very subtle subtle manner, uh, you know, and and this idea of isolation has always mm -hmm. been in your work. Yeah. I've always felt that you're 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 a defender of the isolated individual, mm -hmm. you know, it, right straight through to, to today. Uh, your your figures, your the large drawings and stuff—they're always singular, very quiet yeah. and very singular and very reflective. Yeah. In, in a sense, these figures are almost um, self-portraits, actually. You know, I think. Uh, um, yeah, it it it. it the model is like an avatar. Uh, I, I use him as, as uh, a representation of me, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't want to be my image um, on the canvas, you know, but but the model basically, which is that puppet, you know, even when I'm painting an, an animal, for example, you know, I would like to inject a certain amount of my personality into that animal, mm. you know. Um, that's very interesting. I, I, I like this, you know, it's a question I, uh, uh, or an observation I hadn't really had before regarding, because you do these large scale images of, yeah. of animals, only, uh, the, only, the bison, uh, on, only certain animals, you know? Um, yeah. That's why I keep repeat, repeating, uh, certain animals, you know, like the right, 
I mean, because there's a strength there. There's a strength in these characters, in the, in these animals that you're doing. You know, if you look at primitive culture, they always believe that um, every human being is an animal spirit. You know, mm. whether whether you resemble a cat or or a tiger or a bird, you know, mm. depending on your character. Yeah. And who do you identify with? Which animal uh, are you really identifying with? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I think it has to be a few animals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you've done the rhino, for example, like the rhino, which is a very interesting and so well done. I mean, it's such yeah, a yeah. beautiful image. So certain, that certain animals represent certain things, yeah? Um, the rhino, for example, is about power. Mainly, you know, it's about size and bulk and power, and, you know. Um, and then another animal that I frequently paint is, is the is the warthog, you know. I mean, the warthog is well, it's not something you want to bring home with you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but there is beauty there, you know. Yeah. Um, Maybe it's because people don't think of it as beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's not one of these, you know, sexy images that you, you see on in magazines. The warthogs, well, look at the down and dirty the warthog. Yeah. It's like kind of a down and dirty yeah. animal. But it, and it, it kind of reflects nicely. I really like this uh, part of this discussion because it really does reflect into the sort of the isolation of both animal people. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, we're isolated as creative individuals. We're we're, we're painting in isolation. Uh, yeah. You have, I know, for decades. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what's interesting is that you are really reflecting the isolation <laughs> aspect in, in everything you do, which is fabulous. Yeah. Just an observation I had just now. So Yeah, I know. Um, essentially, I think all artists paint self-portraits, you know? Uh, because, yeah, this is what is inside you that you have to think out on the canvas, you know. There are self-portraits in all forms, you know, whether you're an attraction, uh, figurative, or whatever, you know. These are all reflections of your inner self, you know, so yeah. self-portrait. So when an artist is not true to himself, I think you can sense it, you know, where, where yeah. he's when he's um, when he's doing things that are not honest, you know. I mean, in all art forms, whether in music or in writing, there is this thing called honesty, you know. No. Um, no. That this thing you're, you're you're putting out there is real, not something mm -hmm. you pick up from w watching this or hearing someone talk or whatever, you know. I think that that is one of the things um, which is rarely picked up when when you look at art. You know, um, the state, this this honesty. You know, with, yeah. with that I'm talking about. You know, but, um, I think you both reflect this in your work, and I think Sergio does as well. I mean, with his work, there's an honesty. There's a, uh, and you feel it with the work immediately. Um, and you both are figurative painters, really, and. Or oh, you've used the figure predominantly in your work, uh, mm -hmm. whereas I, I'm a complete, you know, uh, non-objective abstractionist. Yeah. But I do have my, it is me that I'm painting. Exactly. But, yeah. so, but Sergio, Serge, how do you react to that? And I think the honesty part of the making is, mm -hmm. is a process, yeah. you know, and is digging into the well that, you know, Saki, you're talking about willingness to dig into your own well yeah. you know to find the good and the bad of you yeah. that you're gonna put out in the world i think the you know where honesty it comes from and it's all about it yeah. you know i would love to also kind of uh, look exactly at at, uh, at your beginning of your career you know and how do you find your mark your way like i would love to hear some of your earliest struggles because I, I think sometimes it's a lot easier to Talk about now the successful Saki and everything that you have done. It's amazing. But I would love to hear that as you started your career too, oh, okay. trying to dig into that well, right? Because a, a lot of the, 
the listeners of the podcast are, are artists, yeah, who may be struggling. So, tell us well, a yeah, about this, this is a, this is a really good question because it's uh, you know our our listener uh, that are listening to us uh, or will be listening to us. They are you know as you say some of the early art in their careers, right? So, yeah. um, you know, this is really important uh, to hear because you know, yeah, you're Mister Successful, but you know, <laughs> we all started somewhere. <laughs> and I have a few stories. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, when I first started, you know, I was in advertising for a long time, um, mm -hmm. but I wasn't working full time. I was I was a freelancer, mm -hmm. so I used to service various agencies. You know, um, I was doing things like illustrations, storyboards, visuals. This was the days before computers. You know, sneakers. Right? I remember you were doing <laughs> sneakers. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, my intention has always been to pay from the very beginning. You know, when I went to art school, you know, the idea was to become a painter, but somehow my parents said, oh, you're going to starve, you know. <laughs> you're going to make the money. <laughs> uh, we, we, we're going to have to feed you all your life, you know. So, so I did a compromise. Instead of studying painting, I, I, I studied design, you know. Mm -hmm. So when I left art school, I immediately in fact went into publishing and advertising. But after after about 10, 15 years, I, I decided to quit, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it was like cold turkey, you know. I just stopped taking on yeah. signings and commissions. Um, I bought all, you know, the paints and all that and... and I didn't even know how to spread the candle being that bad, you know? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> that shows a confidence, though. You know, you, you just said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to learn how to do it, you know, immediately. But but in the beginning, you're, you, you, get, you really are not clear what you want to do. So what you do is you, you copy. You know, you look at other artists' works, you look... Uh, I was, I was looking at every, every everybody from Rembrandt to to, to Van Gogh, you know. <laughs> you know, the where am I going to fit into this? You know, I mean, because all all this while, every every job that I've done, I've received like a job brief. You know, over oh, seven years, um, <laughs> this particular product and this the audience that we are targeting and. And, we, and a deadline. <laughs> yeah, and a deadline. <laughs> yeah. So when it, when you're on your own, it seems like you're waiting for for a job brief. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> when is it coming? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. By the way, you know, the story goes that I, I met a very senior artist, and and he told me, he said, "Yeah, you're thinking too much." He said, "You know, you 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 get tired before you." you even approach the canvas, you know. Um, mm -hmm. If you are unsure, you said, use your strength. What what is your strength? You said, and just start something very simple. Don't think mm -hmm. too much. Don't let the canvas do the thinking. You see, <laughs> which was which was what I I did, you know. So, so were those the? Uh, the were, let, were, just going to interject here. Was that the series of Legong dancers no, that you did? Oh, no, those the three lives. Oh, the still lives. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because I was thinking, okay, something I don't want to think too much about. <laughs> you know, still life is perfect, you know, because you take an object, you put it there, and you paint it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Your concern Easy. is um, composition, actually. Mm -hmm. Where do you put the object, and where do you put the table, and what's on the background, you know? So nothing heavy conceptually. But it is something that gets you with a certain momentum, you know? Yeah. And, and one other thing that he told me, he said that once a thing thing is done, good or bad, leave it aside. Never go back to it. No way. Always mm -hmm. go forward, you know, because that is part of your history, you know? Mm. Yeah, was so, that easy enough to do? Was that, was he, was that easy? Uh, um... The first few works didn't, you know, wasn't very good, but eventually it, it got better, you know. But what it did was, it 
like I said, it, it gets get you into a certain momentum of working, you know? Yes. The rhythm, yeah. You know? Yeah. And this rhythm is what allows you to expand and, and explore, you know, because mm-hmm. you got that, that confidence, you know? Um, especially when, when you manage to sell, you know, in the beginning, you know, um, selling is, is really a, a, a big issue, you know, and, but once people start buying your work, it gives you a lot of confidence. You know? Yeah. But we'll follow it more. <clears throat> so there's, but, I'm not, but I think back on, if I may interject here, I think with your early work, with your, with your, uh, still lives, you still made them, <clears throat> you still made them you. They were your still lives, you know, and I see a lot of young artists that are coming up today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, both here and abroad. They, they're tending to sort of copy, but they don't get out of that rut of copying. Yeah. Where I think, I think you started, you know, with an idea of, you know, well, I could take those elements and put those elements together, make a still life. But you quickly yeah. developed your own style. Yeah, uh, and rec- recognize where, style. Yeah. yeah. This is where you can actually, even in a still life, you can have that. If you know how mm-hmm. to build. You yeah. know? How you place an object on, on an empty canvas is so important, you know? You put, able, you put the object in a, in a corner of the frame, a small set of the thing. You, you put the object across all the frame, you know, covering the canvas in a set of being different, you know? Yeah. So yeah. how you angle the project, how uh, the object, how you eat the lighting, you know, uh, the colors, all this is different things. You know? And it's all an education too. I think it's a great education by doing all of those elements, you know, pulling all those elements together, like you said, yeah. the lighting, the coloring, composition. Yeah, the power of, of composition, you know? Yeah. The, um, the power of, of, of light, you know, of mm-hmm. colors, you know? They all have very deep psychological uh, implications if you, know, if you know how to apply it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just by doing the still lives, you know, um, I learned a lot, you know, about yeah. how to express things, you know? Um, and you played with this kind of, it almost titillating kind of subject matter you know it could it could verge on slightly a sexual innuendo yeah. that kind of thing and i think that that's what why i think you took the still life from you know the bowl of grapes you know on a table to something yeah. a little bit more provocative yeah. and i think that that also is part of your your mark as a painter as a yeah. as a as an artist later in life you've always played with that kind of edgy subject matter, whether yeah. it bodes. Yeah. Uh, expecting meaning from ordinary objects, you know, from a banana, from, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it, it's, it, it's, uh, 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 the things you can do, I mean, look at what's going on now. You, you read uh, the guy in Korea who ate. Um, the banana, yeah. The banana. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You know, a couple of <laughs> bananas, you know. Right. <laughs> no, Saki, as you were talking about about this and uh, Trigger, you talk about the the still lives, and I, I've looked at many of your still lives, Saki, you know, prior to, to the conversation, and even in the still life, there's an element of isolation, right? Or okay. the object. Yeah, by yeah. So, so here's a chicken or egg question. What came first, <laughs> right? The chicken or the egg? So do you feel that as you started working in the still life, and did you realize that you were already in an intuitive way making images where isolation was prominent or you thought about isolation first and you made your elements to be isolated, you know? No, I never, man, could, it could, comes especially actually, you know, um, there's, there's still lives actually, um, it started with objects, you know, um, it started with actually, you know, when my when my mother died, you know, I started painting the the stuff that she uses in in the kitchen, you know, because mm-hmm. you know the things she cooked. It's a bit of a memory piece for you. Yeah, you know, it's, it was very yeah. serious at Umber at that time, you know, and it was getting me down, and um, and that's when this 
erotic fruits came about, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I can't do that. You know, sometimes when, when I'm down, um, I try to do the opposite, you know. Make something mm-hmm. frivolous, you know, yeah. and be a bit naughty, you know. Just to somehow balance out my emotions, you know. So yep. some erotic fruits came about, you know. Mm-hmm. But how I composed these things, you know, in the beginning, because these were my mother's things and and, and, and she just passed away, you know. Mm-hmm. So that idea of isolation and loneliness was there, you know. How okay. It was, yeah, very interesting. It, it makes sense now, yeah? Yeah. yeah uh, and now he was made, you know. Um, and that's the biography called Pal right there of the still life. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, great, great question too. Yeah. Um, so even now, every time I, I compose, you know, uh, where the object is placed is is extremely important in in relation to the space around it. Yes. You know, because it tells a story. You know, composition yeah. if done well can can tell a story. You know. Well, I seem to remember. Let me uh, interject again here with the uh, the New York show, which is one of the. After we had met, I think you did a show in New York with Nancy Green. Yes. Uh, yeah. We both did, actually. Yeah. Uh, Barbara Green, yeah, Barbara yeah. Green. Uh, yeah. I was doing one with Nancy Moore. That's why I couldn't. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, uh, but you had done this series called The Smoker Series, which clearly is a, is an important part of your life. Uh, uh, all our lives, really. Well, my life, anyway. Um, but th- there was an interesting, you took the still life, you took something small, you know, the the utensil of your mom's, for example, mm-hmm. uh, and that meant something to her, that meant something to you as a child or as your as a family item kind of mm-hmm. thing. And then you've expanded this into this big red couch, as Sergio had mentioned, yeah. you know, the, the, and the guy sitting at the end smoking with a cloud of smoke. Yeah. Uh, there Again, you've taken now what is, is most uh, sort of biograph- biographical to you, mm-hmm. the couch, the smoking, the cigarette. Yeah. You know, it's a really an interesting, you've moved away from the family kind of thing yeah. and made your individualism here with the with the smoking series. And it was a, a powerful series, as I recall. Yeah. Uh, uh, mainly because of scale, you started to scale everything up at that point. Yeah. 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 Did mean, you feel I did? It was, was small, you know. Uh, you never had problems with scale. Uh, as I know, because your work is pretty monumental, uh, and you do it at, you know, a number of pieces together so that they become, you know, a massive big scale yeah. on yeah. someone's wall, you know? You, you need to have a reason why you want to do things big, you know? Um, does the image need the scale? No. Or is the image better if it wall and intimate, you know? Um, and you know that I mean, how you decide whether the size of a painting, whether you're gonna the work is gonna look better on paper or on canvas, you know, all this has implications, you know. Yeah, you uh, both are uh, like uh, you both work at a at a fairly large scale in your work, particularly on your on your paper works. Yeah, I mean, uh, you work excessively large. Uh, yeah, I think the three of us we like to mostly. to make big. <laughs> we, I make large. I don't work yeah. on paper as much uh, yeah. uh, as much as you guys do, but yeah. the the fact that it's you are, yeah, the scale is so important. Again, you know, and I, I kind of wonder whether it's. Uh, I mean, maybe this is incorrect, but you know, coming from that graphic design background that we've all come from, where we were kind of limited to a, you know, an A four size. Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, format, right? We were never allowed to go big. Yeah. Well, what was the point? Well, but unless we were doing a billboard, of course, but mm-hmm. that was primarily in, in design rather than, you know, doing what we're doing. But I think it's it was our way of actually getting out of that yeah. that rut of being, you know, the the finicky illustrator or finicky sort of designer yeah. working with type and small and scale. All of yeah. a sudden, now we could we could really go as large found freedom we want it yeah, we yeah. found a freedom and i think that that's in, an interesting i psychological thing i, I think oh, yeah. to look i have to look into that again a bit more yeah, yeah. But, I mean, yeah. With, with, with scale for me um it's about the, the transference of of um of power actually you know 
when you look on a on a on a on a small uh, piece of paper on a small canvas, well, basically you're using your 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 wrist as a as a keyboard. Yeah. 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 But when you work on a on a bigger scale, you have to use your elbows. You know, because the transference yeah. of power is is different. You know. Yeah. If you're yeah. working on a big canvas and you're still using your wrist. You know. The transference of power is, is not proportionate, you know? Yeah. yeah. But how do you explain yeah. your drawings then? Real big canvas, sometimes you need to use your shoulders as a, as a pivot. Yeah, yeah. It's a body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the body, you know? So so the scale uh, is, 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 is correct, you know? Uh, it's also commanding. I mean, commanding for subject matter. When you start to see something, as an example, your, uh, any one of your animal series, the you know, the warthog. And when you start to see them at life size and bigger, I mean, there's something, and there's something there that, that is just incredibly powerful. Oh yeah. I mean, Taking the, something comes, the, count, the power comes from the gesture, you know? Yeah. You cannot have, you cannot have the power if you're doing this, you know? But, <laughs> you know, the power comes from that gesture. Yeah. Yeah. Very true. And I think also like in figurative painting, the closer the figure relates to another human size, there's a there's a certain psychological yeah. connection to what they say. Let me hear full size. That's why you, you, uh, when it comes to figurative work, it has to be life size or larger than life. Sometimes. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, then you get the presence. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, I think that this is what you you did with your uh, charcoal drawings. Of which I, I I I so admire uh, your your mastery of the medium is one thing. It's the yeah. scale, which is another thing. You know, I have right in front of me. I have a a poster that was done. I think, I think it was actually a transit sign that had yeah. been posted in Singapore. Yeah, that yeah. you had somehow gotten, uh, and it, it just says your name, and it's got one of your figure, the male nude. Yeah, uh, you know, just from this from the hips up, he's nude. Uh, and, and it's on this on this uh, billboard ad yeah. for a, I think a transit station, and you yeah. signed it for me, and I had it framed, so I got it actually sitting. Good <laughs> night. Uh, but but because of that scale, I think was was so yeah. amazing. Yeah. Uh, and also again, when I worked with charcoals, you know, um, I almost I try to work with charcoal. In a sense, almost like the way I work with paint, you know, mm. that means um, part of the time or, or some of the time, I don't actually use the charcoal feet. What I do is I ground the charcoal into powder, you know. Mm. Then I use my 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 the palm of my hands here, you know, dip it into the charcoal, and so you get that gesture. Very right. yeah. yeah. Which frees the charcoal from being space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's interesting when because I was going to ask you this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what I'm going to ask both of you because really you were talking about <clears throat> gesture or being gestural uh, with the hand with a piece of charcoal or paintbrush, a small paintbrush. So you're using your wrist. And then you, and I was thinking, well, how, then how are you doing this with your charcoal and your large drawings? Because they are highly realistic pieces. Yeah. But I know your process, but now it makes sense. You're actually using yeah. your shoulder into the work because you're using yeah. your palm now. It's a yeah. completely different you, thing. I mean, I'm, you get you the, yeah. pull up my palms here, you know? Yeah. Then you go over. Yeah. 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 So, then you get like uh, missing a finger, fingered. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I got blisters. <laughs> <laughs> like you can go rub a bank after you do a charcoal drawing because you have no fingerprints. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it, it I'm encouraging people to look at at Zaki's work uh, in detail. Uh, just yeah, and I think there's I think. there's a tremendous amount out there on the web that you've got uh, shown where you sh you see the scale of your work. Yeah, and I think that that is I think that that's what is most impressive. One of the questions I wanted to ask you: You like to. I mean, with, with new artists, young artists, you know, we're all often scared to sort of push boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. And I think 
you've done this so beautifully. And I think if you look back on your history of your work, uh, you, you've taken these little, you know, uh, these, uh, social norms or maybe not norms, uh, they're almost faux pas. You know, you don't want to deal with that. You don't want to, you don't want to talk about, you don't want to talk about sex. You don't want to talk about, you know, drugs or you don't want to talk about homelessness or isolation or religion. Right. And I think what you've done, uh, and you explain this in the film I was watching yesterday, the idea that you are open to all sorts of, uh, uh, of feedback from the world, religion, you're not scared, you know, I know we're in a culture here that sometimes they would say, you know, you're Malaysian and you are of a certain faith, right? Uh, you can't really be yeah. focusing on another religion. Yeah. I mean, uh, some of the critics might say that, yeah. but you have, have sort of ignored that in a way and, and celebrated the other religious elements. And that's where you two have a lot in common. Uh, and as far as your your iconography, your your there's a spirit in your work, both of your works, uh, that that talks about sort of a higher being, you know, the afterlife, the or life well lived in, in your figures. I think. Yeah, yeah Sergio, what do you think? Yeah, no, thoroughly, and uh, I, I think uh, you know. Uh, what I, what, you know, I said Lukasaki's work, you know, and what you're talking about, uh, the going into uncomfortable spaces to mm. which happen in, you know, from the moment we are born into a family, there are topics in every family that perhaps you don't touch or you don't talk about. And then you go into That's school, right. there are things that you don't talk about, you don't say. You go into society, there are things that, not, you, you know, there's are all these refrainers as we go through, through our life, which are quite, uh, quite interesting, but to see an artist, you know, to actually delve into those difficult conversations and approach them through their work and in a sort of way, you know, kind of like the way you have done it, uh, without all the, on the pinnings of, of, uh, of history, but then somebody who's understand that will pick those up and will know exactly what yeah. you're trying, what you're talking about. Has it been well received for you? Uh, in Asia, uh, Saki, you know, as you have done this, uh, you know, Drew has talking about. Well, I mean, yes, they have, but most people doesn't like to talk about. What, yeah. You know, when, when you, especially over here in Malaysia, you know, um, I know there's some some people, some artists uh, uh, disagree. Mm -hmm. if, what I do because I'm a Muslim and I paint a Christ-like figure or I paint a Hindu mm. god on the Buddha. Yeah. You know? This is what I was referring to. Yeah. 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 You know, I I find no contradiction, no problem to this kind of things. I can still remain a Muslim. You know, mm -hmm. and yeah. be a native of other religions. You know, mm -hmm. but um, no one has really sort of engaged me in in, in the dialogue over this. Mm -mm. Uh, I think you take it right to the level. I think you take it to uh, to a precipice that <laughs> you still haven't jumped off. You know, <laughs> you, know you, hey, you know what I mean. Uh, you're not you're not offending to the point where it's just in your face. It's yeah. subtle, and it comes right back to what we were talking about earlier, and the fact that you are you are telling stories that are are untold. They're, they're unfinished. We're not. You're not really telling the whole story. You're letting us. Yeah. You know, determine what the ending is yeah. or what the beginning is, you yeah. know, it, it, that yeah. conduit. Yeah, right. I mean, the words are a bit ambiguous in that sense. Yeah. It, it, um, mm -hmm. um, because I, I don't really preach when, when I make uh, a painting, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not trying to sell you something, but what I do is I didn't or, or I allude to certain acts, you know, and let yeah. you. Yeah. Figure it out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and Sergio does the same so beautifully with his figurative work that, you know, we I know Sergio's background uh, from from his family background and, and the influences that he had as a as a man, you know, growing up in Mexico and in, in the U.S. 
uh, and with the father that you have and the and the the uh, the influences that were around you. Mm-hmm. And you yeah. and you bring up the topic, but you never complete it. You know, you right. don't right. You're talking about afterlife. You're talking about the figure descending or ascending. Mm-hmm. You're, but you're not putting, you know, sort of Christ on a cross. Mm-hmm. But you're, in a way, you kind of suggested in some of your works. And mm-hmm. I think that that's the beauty is that it's not really, you're not being pointed at, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, we, and I think that's it's suggestive. Yeah. And I think that's one of the um, really good things, like for other artists who are listening to this, you know, to mm-hmm. find those, those, those gaps sometimes or those cracks mm-hmm where we can go in and, and put our mark, you know, it, it's easy to, to go to the comfortable space where we all be accepted, you know, a beautiful flower, but, you know, but sometimes to, to go where others may not be willing to go and, yeah. and, and, the, and then just do your take, like going back to the honesty at the beginning, right? Mm-hmm. Do you and do your take on that, which you see in the world and then put it on on your canvas or your photograph or, or whatever it is. And, and I think yeah. that yeah. brings that back to the honesty question that, uh, that you drew, you know, you wrote about and, and I think, yeah. you know, it's, it's delving into that, that we can mm. go into those places and for the friends listening, you know, asking yourself, what are those places for me where maybe I've been wanting to do something, but I'm afraid by what others might say or what might, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. you see, this what is the all- critic. Yeah, always a dilemma. Always a, mm-hmm. And one of the things you say, Zaki, in the in this film, uh, I'm, I keep referring to this film because it it is it's you know it, you are talking you are talking about many things in here. <clears throat> but one of the things that I wanted to talk about was, uh, you know, with young artists, you know, uh, I, I think what you, what you're doing about the honesty thing, I, 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 you mentioned something in the film where you say the young artists need to develop their own. Um, and I can't remember the words that you actually use, but you know, essentially finding their way. You, they have to find their own way, yeah, right? And yeah. this is one of it's the difficulties. I, you know? yeah, you're finding the voice. Yeah. And one of the difficulties yeah. I have with this, uh, you know, and the and the world is really supporting a lot of young artists right now. It's not just yeah. here. It's not just in America. It's all over the world. Young artists are really sort of the fashionable ones at the moment. You know, everybody's yeah. really regarding. And you, as a gallery owner, are, are in fact supporting the young artists, which I think is great. We were all young artists at one point. At some point, we yeah. and our career, right? Yeah. Uh, so we, I can't say that that's a bad thing. You know, they yeah. might not be buying my work in volume like they used to, but yeah. the the point is, is um, you know, these young artists. I find a, a lot of the the uh, maybe it's just subject matter, maybe it's content that they can't find. Because they're not really coming out as individuals, they're they're really copying. Uh, you know, think, I'm seeing a lot more copying. I think it's most artists, way. most young artists, or even most artists today, you have sort of developed uh, certain, like you draw a parameter around your thoughts, you know, and you only want to act within that parameter mm. to do your property. Yeah, and you refuse to go out where things are a bit unpleasant or uncomfortable for you or difficult to understand, you know? So, you stick with the little borders that you have drawn for yourself, you know? Okay. A, little, a little corner of the field, you know? Um, I think that's the, the problem with a lot of young artists, you know? So, okay. whenever I, I see young artists, I always tell them, Dean, it's wall, you know? Because <laughs> if, you, if you don't, if you don't explore, you know, if you don't, I mean, it's like going for the gym, you know, you need to have <laughs> some pain before you gain something, you know, right. Well, the brain is like that, you know, you, you need to have some pain there, you know, to push things, you know, and, and, and then you discover there are certain areas in your brain that will start opening up if you push, you know, yeah. if you think hard yeah. enough, you know. Quite an analogy for uh, three guys here that probably have never. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I drive by the gym. <laughs> so that's what I mean. I always tell you: know, just see as much as the world 
as you can, mm. read a lot, go see film, go see exhibitions, you know. The more ingredients you have inside here, the more possibilities there are yes. for you to create, you know. Yes. There are no ingredients here. No matter how hot you dig, yeah. I think I'll come out, you know. So, There's an interesting point yeah. in this film. Again, you mentioned going to Singapore to watch film when you were younger. Yeah. Uh, uh, where you're from is Johor Bahru, which is uh, the it basically sits next to uh, Singapore, yeah. where Singapore is today. Yeah. Uh, and you used to go into Singapore to watch films. And I think one of the points that comes very, very clear in, in that, in the documentary and in all of your work, uh, and we can go back to this isolation thing as well, is that you found one element in film that has influenced your entire career. That's mm -hmm. that cinematic, you know, uh, uh, solitude, mm -hmm. right? And I think that that's right. one thing the artist, uh, you know, you can do this without traveling the world. You can find that one influence that's very important to you uh, and then really research it. So if it's a banana, really study that banana mm -hmm. and, and know how it works before you paint it, you know? Uh, so, but what I'm finding with a lot of these artists today, not only here, but in, you know, around the world is they're just replicating certain things <clears throat> and it, it doesn't feel researched. It doesn't feel that they are like intuitive with this. Yeah. It doesn't feel authentic. I mean, yeah, authentic. a lot of studio intellectualism going on, you know, yeah. um, Doing things which you which is not true to yourself, you know. Mm. Um, I don't know. Perhaps um, you know. If you look at art world in general today, every artist basically has got blood, you know. Yeah. To do whatever sure. you want to do, you know, mm. because all barriers has been removed, you know. Mm -hmm. um, they. There's good and bad in that. You know, because mm -hmm. in any profession in, in life, you know, whether you're a lawyer or a doctor or, or a politician or whatever, no one gets cut blind. You know? Yeah. Unless you are like super duper intelligent or some genius or whatever, you know. Or your eye way way. That's cut blind. You know? <laughs> but here in the art world, you can be a student just out of art school and you have cut lunch. You know, you can do whatever yeah. you want. Yeah. You know? But it's driven a lot. A lot of this uh, industry today is driven by economics. Sergio knows this well because this is, in fact, part of what we, you know, profess in the Artist Next Level as a, the, the business side of doing what we do. Uh, Zaki, you've been very successful in that. Uh, you know, we don't need to talk money or anything like that. People know your work is a value. Uh, which takes me to another question about, you know, uh, exhibitions. I wanted to ask you about this because you're not doing exhibitions anymore. Um, not not out really. of the full blown internet. <laughs> Is there a reason for that? Um, I want to hear this one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so my last exhibition was in 2019. You know. Okay. Where was that? Uh, huh? Where was that? That was in oh, Korea. New that was oh, in New York. York. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. so that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And, the same uh, contemporary. Yeah. And then there was an exhibition plan for Manila. Mm. Uh, supposed to be 2020 or 21, I can't remember. Of course, pandemic. Uh, like a few other things, uh, you know, to plan. And then the pandemic happened. Okay, you good. Know? Um... Um, most you mentioned, yeah. you mentioned to me though, you uh, off the cuff one day just said, "I'm not doing any more shows. I don't want yeah, to more. Shows. They're, they're hard work, right?" Well, you seem, yeah, you know, it's like a year of your life preparing for the show. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm getting old. I'm going to be seventy in a couple of years. You know, um, and then when when I had to cancel this show in Manila. I was I was already working. I was I finished about four paintings, you know, <laughs> and and suddenly, you know, they, they they shut down the gallery. The Manila became a pandemic, and we have to postpone the show. 
I suddenly felt released, you know? I felt, oh, wow, no pressure, you know? <laughs> I like this. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, so I relaxed. And then the Mac era, the pandemic was still on, and they had to cancel again. And finally, I thought, yeah, I'm going to cancel it permanently. I'm not going to do the show. Yeah. Um, and I felt, um, I felt relieved, you know, somehow. Mm -hmm. That, you know, uh, I don't have a deadline looming over my head. Mm. Um, so I thought, well, I'm going to take this year off, you know. I'm not really going to do anything this year. I'm just going to pain and leave myself from home, you know. And we'll see what happens back here, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sergio and I are doing this this thing coming up uh, May 9th uh, to the 11th, which is a it's a boot camp for pre uh, presenting your work. So this, mm -hmm. this actually ties in quite nicely about, <clears throat> you know, assessing your work, right? Uh, and, and putting it up. And you said something to me years ago, and I'll never forget it, and I give you complete credit for it because it's mm -hmm. one of those aha moments. Mm -hmm. You said, you know, never put out work that you're not 100% satisfied with. Yeah. You said it to me in regards to an incident that happened here, mm -hmm. uh, letting something go that I wasn't happy with, and it came yeah. back kind of to haunt me, right? And I think that that... That is also something we, as a senior artist, have to yeah. contend with when we present for a show. Yeah. And I think you must do it too. If you've got yeah. 50 paintings and 10 of them are not quite up to standard, do you have that capability and the discipline to say, no, that's not, those can't go? Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. when you're working towards the deadline, mm. you might let certain bad things go you know yeah and, put go. Yeah. and i can tell you this this works will come back to haunt you <laughs> <laughs> years later years yeah. later you'll see it you know yeah so if you can you know if the work is not up to standard do not show it yeah yeah. yeah yeah this is what we're, when I find, we're yeah. talking about yeah when i find <laughs> interesting uh psyche in your in your career as we're talking and, uh, you know, listening to you talk about, you know, this idea of like deciding not to make exhibitions, you know, the art career works in cycles, right? Or at least we have been yeah. kind of trained in that way. You have an exhibition, you do the body of work, have another exhibition, you do the body of work, and it's an ongoing cycle. It's like the, the pandemic came to kind of stop all that cycles for everybody. Shows got canceled, exhibitions got postponed, yeah. you know, everybody's cycle or rhythm, you know, all of mm -hmm. that's up. And, what I, what I like about, and what, what I hear from you is, you know, evaluating that cycle through this process of being forced to stop, because probably if the mm -hmm. pandemic hadn't stopped, you would still be doing shows <laughs> right now this year. But, uh, probably. you know, kind of like having a, a time to say, wait a minute, you know, why? Why does we have to follow this, this cycle that is being yeah. set upon us as artists and are there alternatives? And I think that's one of the, you know, one of the things that the world has today to offer us artists at all ages is that now yeah. we can also craft our cycles of how we may or may not want scheduling. Yeah. yeah, and or also realize, you know, <clears throat> what do I want to do and what I may not, or at what stages of my career yeah. may I want to do one thing versus another. Yeah. You know, but, you know, considering my age, you know, mm -hmm. I'm going to be 70 soon. I think I, I'm allowed to sort of cruise a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, if you're young and still working, then I would suggest you keep on working. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> do the most you can do, uh, you know, when you can, right? Well, like they say yeah. about the design yeah. industry, it's like it's a young man's game or it's a young, it's a young person's game, right? Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. want to be thrown into design again. That would yeah. be... <laughs> One of the things is, I think most people do not know when to stop. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. You reach a certain age, a certain point in your career. You know, for me, you know, I, I would like to have some time to spell the roses, you know? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. To relax while I'm still in good health. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you feel, Saki, um, that, uh, uh, you know, you're talking about that certain really quickly, but I think it relates to it. 
do you feel that it comes to a certain age or scenarios where you can also overflow the market? Well, yeah. With yeah. Too much work. So you have to then, yeah. at a later stage in the career, lower the the output. Yeah. yeah. So talk a little bit about that strategy, I think. So a lot of younger artists, you know, may want to also yeah. listen to that idea. As, as and as you know, prices go up, you know, um, you should control your output so okay. that, you know, as they say, scarcity is where, you know, um, yeah, yeah, the value is, you know, mm -hmm. once it's scarce, you know, I mean, overproducing is never good, you know, flooding mm -hmm. the market is never good. Yeah. A piece of art, you know, in a sense, it has a shelf life, you know, because once it's up in the gallery for so many months and so we cannot put it up again because to put only with what the CD two years ago it is still there. You know, no one wants yeah, it. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that, that stigma. You know, yeah. although it might be piece of work, you know. And oftentimes I think if you're forced into sort of this this constant making, you mm -hmm. do uh you kind of get blindsided by it all. And you let these works go out. And like you say, yeah. this work can be sitting for two years. There's a reason that it's probably not selling. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that there's no interest in it is because there's a certain something that's missing in that particular work. And this is what we're trying to do with, with the yeah. artist next level. When we're working with artists, I keep reminding them to say, well, like you reminded me years ago, you know, don't, don't put out something that is not to the highest standard because yeah. if it, it isn't it will always come back it's kind of murphy's law like you know well, yeah. it's like the peanut butter always lands on the ground right <laughs> collectors media gallerists everybody will say oh you know that was a fantastic show sergio did but did you see those two over <laughs> you know and, and you go it, it seems to be the ones that that you least expect to get noticed mm -hmm. are the ones that that kind of can ruin a career quickly yeah you know yeah. and that's what we're trying to to get these artists to do always have a critical eye as to mm -hmm. what you're doing and you know sadly in my case i had to go through a bad experience in order to learn from something yeah mm -hmm. and i think that that is a really crucial learning point for me and i'm forever thankful for that uh mm -hmm. for that incident happened while it was nasty it was also you know, it was a it was a wake up call. Learning yeah, experience, yeah. You know, to to be true to yourself should be the guide in the yeah. end. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, because things can get really murky out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. differences of opinions, likes and dislikes, all kinds of. Because you know, when you're exhibiting, you're you're actually exposing yourself. For, for, for criticism and 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 of and, course and views you know so there'll be all kinds of views all kind of criticisms you know likes dislikes you know hate love so and if you you have to talk to a diet you know a yeah. you know, through all yeah. these uh, diversions you know so I think the guide should be you to be true yeah. to your you know yeah, I think you, you, well, you show this very well uh, in what you've done. Mm -hmm. Same with you, Sergio. Oh, I think I do the same. I, mm -hmm. I do what it, I believe is true to myself, yeah. you know, and I, yeah, yeah I, that's a good yeah. takeaway there. Absolutely. And I think that would be actually a great takeaway as we kind of wrap up and start wrapping up today's episode. Uh, we've been uh, chatting over an hour already, believe it or not, yeah. you know, we uh, touched on really great things and there could be. Ten more questions that we could uh, still uh, dive in. Yeah. Thank you, but I think you know this. And a this lot of stories. Where, uh, yeah, <laughs> this this, uh, this way in which we're ending being true to yourself is. I think uh, you know as we think back over the conversation over the last hour, keeps coming back. You know, and I think yeah, that yes. is the uh, the north star for every artist mm -hmm. listening today to this episode. Mm -hmm. Find your truth. Find your truth. Yeah and uh be honest or with your truth and be willing to dive in and touch on those also uncomfortable spaces you know yeah. that may come across you and uh Sakia, you know as we begin to wrap it up and um you know 
and saying our, our last few words. Is there something that you would like to uh, tell our, uh, our friends you're listening, something that maybe you still want, to, you know, that's still in your in your mind, I think would be a good good uh, the words piece of, of wisdom. inside. Yeah, if you had one artist in front of you, to give me kind of like that word of wisdom that I <laughs> gave you, you know, <laughs> like don't think, don't overthink. And that's a wonderful yeah, piece of yeah. advice. I, sometimes I always tell young artists, I, I said, sometimes thinking can be overrated. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> you know, because it leads to self censorship sometimes, you know? Mm -hmm. Think too much, you know? And then you start yeah, thinking, what is people, what are people, how are people going to react to this and all that? You know? Then you start doubting it. Then the idea dies. And you don't do the painting, you know? So. I think sometimes you need to learn to pack your instrument. Yeah. You know, if you have a pretty good compass in you, you know, learn to pack your instinct. Mm. You know, oh. um, and 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 don't think too much. You know, do the thinking maybe after the work is done, and that's what I always do. You know, yeah. after the work is done, I look at it and see uh, what am I trying to say. You know. Um, you know, what is this thing all about? You know, why did I put it there and why did you know, take that thing out? You know, you analyze it that way. It, yeah, you do all your thinking. You do a lot of your process in, in making it. And then yeah, the yeah. thinking will come, why did I do that? You know, as you yeah. say. And yeah. and I, I think that's valuable information for anybody you know, yeah, listening. It's a that. process of self-discovery. Yeah. yeah. So everything yeah. you put on canvas, you know, is something that resonates within you. So try to to find out why you know be true i love it yeah uh, that, that that's great advice Aki. thank you so much for sharing that how about you drew uh one uh one last word there that you want to share with your friends as we wrap today's episode yeah well i have to i'd have to probably you know agree with zaki on this one uh and say the similar thing just be true to yourself do what you what you you know communicate well communicate your story communicate your uh your interest in this work that you are showing tell the story and and don't be fearful of what critics might say what government might say what you know media might say really do you know is it this is all you you are putting you onto the canvas whether it be mm -hmm. in photography and painting and sculpture whatever the medium is you have to be the truest uh and i think that uh that allows us to sleep at night <laughs> yeah because we're always doing something that other people want us to do uh i don't think we ever sleep well because of it you know <laughs> right. we're always doubting ourselves and then mm -hmm. and so or not being true to ourselves so yeah i mm -hmm. reiterate the same message super and uh, for me i actually have one yeah one piece of advice and that is to go and check out saki's work after this conversation yeah. first thing you gotta do well two things you gotta do Click on that share button, share this episode with all your friends, and then go online and find Saki's art. You will be inspired, you will be moved, and you will be glad that now you know him a little bit better. So I'm going to also, in the uh, notes of this episode, I'm going to include a link to this YouTube video that uh, Drew and I talk about quite a bit in this, mm -hmm. uh, in this chat so that you can also hear a little bit more about Saki and you can see his work as he also kind of takes you into his journey as an artist as well. So it's a really uh, wonderful uh, experience to watch that. So Saki, thank you so much for joining us. It's been my pleasure. And uh, Drew and I have been, uh, you know, chatting quite a bit. And it's always great when we have another guest uh, to chat with. And uh, what an honor to have you today. Yeah, I have to say the same. I, I'm, I'm deeply honored. Uh, you know, we've known each other probably, you know, 30 years. Uh, and we have, always have very good conversations. I admire you, what you've done, what you're doing, and what you're going to do. So I'm uh, forever grateful for this. And, you know, I couldn't think of anyone better uh, to, uh, to have a discussion with this morning here on the land that we are, here in Malaysia, but Ahmad Zaki Anwar. So there you go. Okay. Thank you very much for having me. And you know, you're more than welcome. Excellent. Well, thank you to all our friends. We'll see you, my friends, in the next episode. So have a great day. We'll see you at the next level.